Well, welcome to a special session, we'll call it, of the Dan Time Podcast. This was unplanned about a day or so ago, but it's really necessary, and it brings me tremendous pleasure. Some people say great pleasure. I say tremendous pleasure <laughs> to bring to you guys our episode one guest. Couldn't stay away from him too long, Mr. Jim Powell. Jim, thanks for being here on short notice. Dan, hey, thank you for having me. I'm fired up. I'm always here to help a friend, and uh, you know, always good to have Jim on Dan time. So I've, I've really enjoyed your your other guests. I pale in comparison to uh, Vic Penn and Dan's uh, that are you know county commissioners or whatever, and and all those other uh, illustrious guests. So I'm just honored to be back for a second time. So thank you. Well, Jim, no one compares to you, but it is hard to do a head-to-head comparison, quite frankly. So you're just you're just your own entity. But today is not about helping old Dan out, uh, not about doing me a favor. This, Jim, is about sending some good mojo to our mm. beloved Chicago Cubs. Man, the Cubs need some help. The Cubs finish up Game 3 in Atlanta against the Braves. We've lost the first two games in pretty disappointing, oh, heartbreaking, uh, dem- demoralizing fashion. Yeah. Very Cubs-like. What's your outlook for tonight? Let's just start with tonight. Uh, gloomy. I mean, the Braves are, you know, without a doubt, the best team in baseball. They have been for a couple of years. We're playing them at, at Atlanta. And so we had our chances. We should have won the past two games if that fly ball hadn't gotten in the lights and uh, Andre Dawson had muffed it out there. Uh, you know, we would have had game number one easily. I think Riggleman's, Dawson. Yeah, Riggleman's really going to have to uh, look at who, what's he going to do with Sandberg out there this week and, or this or tonight. You know, just can't get any worse than, than what's happened so far. Uh, Jim, I don't know what decade you're in. Um, that, are you you also thinking about the Shawnometer? Yeah, the Shawnometer. You know, Gracie's really going to have to be that team leader. You know, we've kept him around. <laughs> Rework that contract. Uh, you know, we need Gracie out there, you know, getting a bat on a ball, uh, keeping guys' heads in the game. You know, that's just uh, – I mean, you want- Dusty Baker, what is he doing? You know, just ruining Kerry Wood and Mark Pryor. Uh, so, I mean, you know, just not looking good tonight. Uh, more more positive on the uh, – who's our next three games against the Brewers? That's right. The uh-huh. Brewers have uh, – they moved to the National League here recently, uh, recently being in the last – 30 close to 30 years <laughs> yeah jim, jim van winkle what i don't know what's going on there <laughs> i mean don't get me wrong i'm enjoying this this trip down through the the, the tunnels yes what's Chicago with this Cubs interleague fan. junk I, I, who's who does what are okay. we doing interleague games for i mean how's this possible these makeups or anyway all right but, yeah jim let's not pretend that you don't pay some attention to the cubs folks in 2008 Jim gave me one of those wristbands that if you follow this team, you might remember these Uh, these cute blue wristbands back when the Lance Armstrong, yellow uh, Armstrong wristbands were kind of uh, spurring some mm -hmm. imitations. 2008, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I just remember that summer very vividly. And I thought, well, as long as I wear this wristband, Surely it is going to happen. This is going to be the year. Lou Pinella. Yep, sweet Lou. Um, we were so dominant at home. I just, I mean, watching those games, all those home games that season, it was a new thing when you would turn on the game and the crowd was electric and you just expected to win. You expected to hear Go Cubs Go mm-hmm. in, a, in a few hours. But um, long time since those days. I'm actually kind of glad those days are behind us because – We've won a championship. Mm-hmm. We've, you know, we, we weren't the dynasty we thought we were going to be. But uh, this season, where we are now is not where we were supposed to be, even if you go back to the first part of July, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly the middle part of July, getting, getting up to the trade deadline. But here we are, Jim. Let's cut right to it. The Cubs are hanging on by a thread. Dentist the, of threads, yeah. <laughs> to the third wild card. Now, that we could do a whole episode on the playoff expansion and do you like the third wild card? Do you like any of the wild cards? Uh, do you wish it was 1967 again and we just had <laughs> two teams battling it out? Um, but, yeah, we, we cannot – we basically can't afford to lose. Um, I think I sent a message to you, Jim, and a few other guys earlier today. 
if the best the Cubs do tonight and over the weekend against the Brewers is win two and lose two, that's probably not good enough because Mm -hmm. we're in such a – it's an avoidable situation, but here we are. We don't hold the tiebreaker against any team that's that's right in there with us. So you got the Marlins. They break any tie with anybody that's competing with them, the Diamondbacks, the Reds, the Cubs. Um, but we don't hold a tiebreaker against anybody. So we've got to win this third wild card, and it's the only one that we can win outright. So that means two games out of the next four at a minimum, but – most realistically, three, and I'm calling it right now, Jim. We got to run. Don't the table. say it. We got to win all four. And I'm prepared to say, despite how ugly the last two games in Atlanta have been, we the, the Cubs are going to win all four of the remaining oh, games. Damn, We're going to sweep I, the man. Brewers at Wrigley North. I mean, your your positivity is infectious, and I'm you know jealous of how positive you can be especially your positive outlook when the chips are down <laughs> and there's doesn't seem to be much light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, and, I, man, I would be ecstatic if they won uh, three out of four. So four out of four would just be outstanding. And, I mean, if they won four out of four, they'd have to be in, right? I mean, I guess there's still, you know, there's possibilities everybody else could do the same. But, yeah, I'm hopeful too and um, hope, you know, Five days from now, we can be texting each other gifts of the flag flying at Wrigley with a W on it. Well, as it stands now, Justin Steele is the projected starter for the final game, game 162, which would be game three in Milwaukee. If it all hangs in the balance, Justin Steele is the projected mm. starter. Tonight, we've got Marcus Stroman. Tomorrow, my favorite Cubs pitcher Doc. of the past uh, he's he's the only remaining player, I guess, except what Ian Happ of the championship team, mm-hmm. Kyle Hendricks, the professor. Mm-hmm. So oh, I just started. called him Doc. That shows you how close. Doc. He Doc. <laughs> here the I was, professor. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and here I was thinking, all right, we're going to do a special session, bonus episode, and uh-huh. I'm going to bring on my best friend and a huge Cubs fan yeah. who certainly knows, <laughs> got his finger on the pulse. Um. Oh, and I called Doc. Well, I called the professor Doc, and I gave you uh, '80s and early '90s Cubs references. So you're welcome. You should have had right, Travis on. He follows right. along better than I do. Jim, let's get to some questions. We know what the Cubs got to do, and well, let me. What's your prediction? Uh, so I'm the optimist, and in episode one, I famously congratulated you as uh, being a good face and a bad situation type guy. And you're like, uh, well, it's not really me, but thanks for. <laughs> <laughs> that was very uh, kind of you. I just have never <laughs> been told that by anybody else or think of myself that way. But that was you're like, very kind of you. You're like, I'm I'm kind of the Eeyore or whatever you said. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but what is your prediction? Are, are we are we getting swept tonight? Uh, and then what do you think about yeah, Milwaukee? I think, uh, unfortunately, like I said, those first two games were the games the universe was saying, these are the two games the Cubs will win, and we didn't. You know, I know a sweep is tough no matter what, but just the fact that we gave away to, it would seem easy to me to say that we lose tonight, which is still okay. It's the Braves. I think we win the last three. I think we do it. But, but we don't make the playoffs. We don't make the wild card. Somehow, mm. the, somehow the other two or three ahead of us or, or Reds behind us do better. But I yeah, hope, I hope we still make it. So, uh, did the so the Cubs are out? You said they're gonna win tonight and uh, get swept. No, lose by the Brewers. tonight. Lose tonight and win the next three. Oh, win the next three. Okay, so we're making the playoffs. Three and four. What ultimately happens to the Cubs? Are we losing in the NLCS? Are we are we losing in the first round? Or what are you prepared to say here? I mean, it could just be perception, but gosh, based it on like, it seems like every year one of these teams that squeaks in goes on a heck of a run because. You know, it's almost like they have to buckle down and they're already playing playoff baseball when these teams that have wrapped it up like the Braves two, three weeks prior are kind of coasting. And maybe it's maybe it's just me imagining that, but doesn't it feel like every year one or two one or two of these wild these, you know, barely scraped by wild cards does really well and makes and makes a heck of a run. So as a Cubs fan, I think you know, if they go through this adversity and they come out the other side and as a wild card team and and make it I think they could they could go on a run, especially if the bats can keep going like they're going. Our middle relief has just been terrible. So, 
And that's one of the Green. things you got to have. But the pitcher, everybody's, all the starters have done a lot better. If Stroman could regain, you know, early season form, I'd be even more confident. But well, I'm really happy that Cody Bellinger uh, did not get traded. That we had that run mm-hmm. and became buyers at the deadline, and you know, still have some of these guys in the lineup. So I think he could be a, a huge contributor. I think if we just pull something off here, again. Winning two, losing two does not put us in great position, but because all the Marlins got to do is just win two and lose two as well, and they're in. Mm -hmm. Anyway, here's what I think. I think the Cubs are going to win all four. They're going to win the next four games, win out, get in, and I have the Cubs, Jim. Oh, gosh. Losing the NLCS four games to two. Oh, I think we reach the NLCS. I think it's going to be just a tremendous celebration. This team, you know, a lot of teams, like you said, when you get into the postseason and it's it's like a new season has begun. Mm-hmm. Everyone zero and zero. And we've just we've narrowed it down to this uh, elite group of teams. And here you are. I mean, the Phillies, that was so exciting watching what they did and getting to see, you know, Schwarber. Schwarber bombs in, the, in October, but. Okay, moving along. Jim, who's your favorite Cubs manager of not all time, but of your lifetime, and as long as you've been paying attention? Favorite field boss? Oh, gosh. Zimmer? (laughs) It's hard to disagree. I mean, just love the look of him. You know, they don't make managers like that anymore, unfortunately. And we were kind of on the tail end of it, too, so we were just lucky to have had him and and seen him. And he, I think – you know, he was there for – was your favorite team ever, right, 89 Cubs? The 89 Cubs. Yeah. And That's... I've got the VHS tape, The Boys of Zimmer, which I think you can find on YouTube now. <laughs> That's great. So, yeah, he would be mine. What about you? For the longest time, I would say Don Zimmer. I mean, it's hard not to, but I'm going to go way out here, Jim. Uh-oh. And I'm going to go with Riggleman. Riggs. Riggs. I'm going with Riggs because – there was something very special to me about that 1998 season that doesn't get talked about a whole lot. So if you remember, in 89, we're 10, right? Mm-hmm. We're 11, we're th- something around there, fifth grade, sixth grade. So we got to wait all through the end of high school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, when you're 19 and you're 20 and you're 21 and you, you've you been following a team since you are a little kid, I mean, th- that is the time that you want to see a championship. You know, when I finally saw the Cubs win in 2016, it was, I mean, it was thrilling. But you're like, man, I kind of wish I, had, I was 27. Yeah. You know, because you're just a little older. You don't celebrate quite the same way. But when we got that wild card berth, and that was, the wild card was a new thing in 98, mm-hmm. um, I just loved everything about Riggleman. And, you know, he had a, kind of a short run with the Cubs. What's he but, doing now? How, wh- whatever happened to old Riggleman? Is he still with us? Uh, as far as like not pushing up daisies, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, he's uh, <laughs> see a bench coach somewhere or coaching his grandkids' high school team or is he a major league uh, uh, manager? I literally have no, no idea. No, you know he he managed the the Washington Nationals. You know he was when when Strasburg came up, mm-hmm. he was still the skipper for the Nationals and he was here in Pensacola, not for that long Wahoos? ago. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and then um. And then managed maybe an independent league team. I don't know. I'm not uh, on the Wikipedia page. I got now. I'm curious. I'm sorry to throw this. Uh, throw such a curveball. Hey, a curveball. I think, I, I think he intended. may have finally retired. But yeah, okay. Jim Riggleman. I mean, I love them all. Luke well, he was great. He he always just seemed like one who would just have that. You know, he probably smelled of you know leather, and he probably had yeah. just the strongest handshake in the history of handshakes. I bet, and just somebody you really wanted to be. You know, your grandpappy or something, uh, even a younger grandpappy for us. But Riggleman was just a badass. I, I, I liked him too, but you can't beat old uh, portly Don Zimmer. Those are both great choices, though. Well, Jim, let's kind of pivot here to fantasy sports. All right, mm-hmm. so you and I are squaring off. We've got fantasy baseball going and fantasy football. Fantasy baseball, we're playing for the bronze now for the – length of the season i'm in first place and it's great and it's unfamiliar territory and i'm loving it i I created this league so i'm 
but the whole time I'm thinking it, this, I mean, it's coming crashing down. This is not. I'm not going <laughs> to be the champion of this league. It's how it always plays out. Why are you so sure of that? Come on. Well, it actually uh, kind of it, 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 it did happen, <laughs> but yeah, that's a good question because it goes against my natural yeah. inclination to believe at all costs. But mm-hmm. yeah, here we are playing for third place, Jim. How do you like? Waking up in the morning and having to set a fantasy baseball lineup, say on a Thursday, but then you all, you also got to check your football lineup or the weekends. Uh, are you okay with that? Well, Dan, I was for the first nine months that we did it. Um, you know, I don't. I hate to air grievances here live on your podcast, but for us to spend you know twelve months or eleven months out of the year setting lineups for fantasy baseball and then to lose in one stinking week. Uh, we really got to look. We got to take a second look at maybe doing a two-week playoff. Uh, you know, two week for each playoff matchup, and doing a total points or something because I busted my butt too. You know, setting that lineup every day, dropping and adding players, and somehow didn't know until literally last week that I couldn't make more than ten moves a week. I hadn't done that the whole year, but I've done nothing but make moves. So, I uh, uh, long story short and. You know, I'm sorry to gripe at you again. I have not even paid attention this week because I'm so such a salty loser about losing last week. So, congrats mm. on the bronze trophy. You earned it. You should have probably been in the first place matchup. But anyway, fantasy football has just begun, and wouldn't you know it, I'm 0-3. And, <laughs> and Jim, <laughs> it's just a, just a horrific start. <laughs> Folks, we've been playing in this league. It's a... Uh, a friends and brothers league for what almost 20 years now i've mm-hmm. been i jumped in in the end of 05 and have been chasing that elusive tail fin as they say in the, the what the cars movie <laughs> about chick hicks so i used to have to watch that over and over and over <laughs> with warren what oh yeah it was warren's favorite movie my my uh, oldest son what, now what was watching, his favorite movie Cars. Cars. Okay. Sorry. But Jim, uh you're two and one. You gotta be pretty pleased with your team so far. Fantasy sports in general or, or football in general, are you still as excited about it? I know you carried the binder to our drafts as mm-hmm. you were in uh it's twenty twenty three. Are you still as fired up as you were in twenty thirteen, two thousand seven, I think your first year? Yes, I, I love fantasy football, and uh, I enjoyed fantasy baseball this year too. Uh, it gave me something to get through the uh, you know ten months that I wasn't playing fantasy football, and uh, I, I love fantasy football. It gives me a reason to watch you know every single NFL game. I know who's playing in every single NFL game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know we have NFL games on at least three nights a week, so um, it gives you a, a reason to get excited and root for teams that you normally wouldn't just because you may have a run, a, you know, running back or a, even a kicker. Sometimes, you know, you're the king of kickers. So, uh, you know how important any position can be. So I, yes, I, I love fantasy football. Um, I've enjoyed the heck out of it. I'm sorry that I demolished your team last week. You were felt it was the largest, biggest blow out of the week. That's one of the trophies you get. So, um, you've just had some tough breaks. You, you, your number one pick has been on IR, right, the whole year. So, Jim, my first round and second round picks are sidelined, and devastating. Yeah, but they'll both be back, and you have a good team. I was actually looking at it to hopefully propose a trade to you. So, you got a good team. Okay, that leads me to another question. So, I'm not so worried about starting zero and three. Uh, it does concern me looking at the points. Um, the points four, I guess they call it. Mm-hmm. You know, you always want to be competitive there. But the record, the first three weeks, not so concerned about. Own five, I don't like the idea of that. But you know, if you're you go own three, then you win next week. So now you're uh, one and three, or you lo- even going own four. You, you got to start winning at some point. But mm-hmm. what point do you start panicking, Jim, when it's not looking too hot? Uh, well, since you say that, I, I'm pretty sure last year I started zero and four. And was getting pretty nervous. If you go zero and five, you're in you're in a deep spot. But with our league, you know, there's ten teams total, but six of us make the playoffs. So most leagues, you know, only if you're ten teams, only four make the playoffs. So if we had, 
you know, fewer playoff spots, I would certainly be sweating at 0-4. But, yeah, at 0-4, I think you're still in a good spot, but you definitely want to win that that game to get you to 1-4 because 0-5 is – you are staring at uh, a big hill to climb. Agreed. All right, Jim, i got to ask you another question. This is sports-related, and we're kind of going to – we're going to jump off into – uh, obscurity, or we're gonna take, we're gonna take this exit over here. I don't know what I'm trying to say, Jim, but what I'm <laughs> detour, <laughs> detour. There you go. Nowadays, based on whatever TV package you have, there's a lot of sports out there that you can just find yourself accidentally watching, and mm-hmm. then 12 minutes go by, and you're still watching beach volleyball or mm-hmm. lacrosse. Jim, is there a sport that you have discovered? Or, or it could be like D3 football, but do you just ever find yourself watching some offshoot sports program? Obscure sport. Hmm. Man, I love to watch bowling, but that's not really obscure. I guess it's kind of obscure, but that was certainly around when we were um, younger. Now what about, I love to watch bowling. I like bowling, but usually if it's on TV, the two guys going at each other are constantly rolling strikes. Yeah. <laughs> and if they don't, it's like this huge disappointment. Yeah. I know Maybe they I'm, used to have putt putt. I would stop and watch putt putt championships every one. I don't know if they do that anymore, but putt putt was always enthralling too. Uh, what about darts? You know what? I don't really. Uh, the only know that one variation of darts that we used to play all the time at Dave's or wherever. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I don't. I do not watch darts. I've heard that darts is super huge in Great Britain. They have live crowds of like ten to twelve thousand people to watch darts. Um, and everybody just goes and has multiple pints of beer and just sing songs and has a great time. So I would love to go a live darts event. I don't know so much about watching it on TV. Do you like it on TV? I do. Um, I like watching darts more for, usually you, you have some international players or it's kind of like, what's this guy's background? You know, mm-hmm. cause they'll give you a little bio on, on the, uh, athlete. And, um, yeah, some, every once in a while. But I don't have a lot of open-ended time right now to even watch the Cubs. Yeah. Or to watch <laughs> yeah. uh, college college football. It's very, very, very condensed. Your viewing it's window just, is very tight. Yeah, yeah. And if you have a few kids, even if you have one kid, and, and you're listening right now, that you, you've probably hit a – period of time where you just can't do what you used to do Mm-mm. can't watch nine innings of a game and you just you just read about it <laughs> the you next just day follow, <laughs> yeah you just follow sports like you imagine that they did when you know someone living in a rural area in 1925 just couldn't wait for the newspaper mm-hmm. so they could figure out what happened in the box score but are you a uh, subscriber to the pensacola post or whatever the newspaper is down there uh, Pensacola News Journal. No, I used to be a subscriber. I actually did not too long ago. I had the paper hit the driveway early in the morning and oh. you know, ran out there and got it in my my slippers and my robe and uh pipe. The pipe and, and my coffee. But I actually kinda I really do miss we talked about this um in the Chris Furmeister episode about the physical newspaper. I really like it, Jim. I think uh well, there was one time we met for lunch or something when I was in Birmingham and I brought a paper with me <laughs> or you, I was waiting for you at the bar yeah. and I was reading a newspaper. Leafing through a newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think anything wrong with that. It's a very pleasant experience. And if you haven't tried it in a while, or if you've never tried it, you got to get over. I think everyone needs to get over this. I, I, it must be psychological that if your fingers are holding that newspaper material, your mind thinks that this material, that this information, is dated. You, people just think that it's got to be on an illuminated screen to be important or current or relevant, and that is not true. So, uh, actually, Jim, that leads me to a question that I've been kind of saving for a regular episode. But, uh oh, Jim, do you ever find yourself getting your car worked on and you're waiting in the waiting area, and you pick up? an auto industry magazine that the owner of the shop subscribes to. It's like, you know, or, or you ever read like an HVAC industry <laughs> journal that's out there in the waiting room? 
I gotta know. Oh uh, no, Dan, I don't. Because most places mm. that you go in now, they don't even have magazines anymore. They expect everybody just to be looking at their phone. So, well, they do here. They do. There's a there's a few remaining vestiges. Is that right? Vestige. Vest. Yeah, vestige. That's a street in Vestavia. Vestige. Uh, vestige. Yes, vestiges. The last remaining flick embers of whatever industry or yes jim my dentist office has a uh pretty robust magazine collection nice there's like a there's a magazine a wall mounted rack that you can walk up to it's it's beautiful and it's not like people magazine and us weekly you could get the current edition of uh sports illustrated or garden and gun yeah Highlights it's all for current kids. stuff. Yeah. But the problem is when I go to the dentist, they are just right on it. So I'll sit down. Oh. I'll be like, look, I don't want to look at my work emails. I, I've already checked everything on my phone this morning. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read Sports Illustrated. So I'll flip it open, and then that door will open. Immediately. Uh, Mr. Mr. McArdle? Oh, yeah. You're like, I was just getting to the crossword puzzle in the back of the TV guide. <laughs> so what are you bothering me so quickly for? So I enjoy that kind of stuff. Jim, we're going to have to get to, I mean, this episode, this was a special session, so I don't want to run this too long. We're at the 30-minute mark. Sure. But no episode would be complete without, we'll call it garbage time. Okay. All right, you ready? Yes. Jim, when you're on the road and you stop at a restroom, are you an accelerator fan when it comes time to wash your hands? Please don't tell me you don't wash your hands, or are you a paper towel guy? Paper towel, 100%. Mm. Not an air-dry guy. It blows the germs all around. It blows them in your every nook and cranny. If you have your mouth open, it blows germs in your mouth. It blows them in your eyes, in your ear holes, up your nose. No, sir. A paper towel, man, 100%. What about World Air Dryer? The old push-button air dryer that actually has the instructions on there with the finger that shows you to push the button <laughs> where to push the button place the hands underneath and then there's a, a third picture i think of the hands uh, rubbing together rubbing. yeah doing a rubbing motion with little Just in yeah. case there was any confusion of how to use this thing <laughs> after 40 years being mounted in gas state okay moving along i disagree with your assessment there i love the accelerator i've always been fascinated with it there's just not many times in your day or your week that you're going to have your hands just blasted like that. <laughs> I mean, it's a little loud, but, this, I mean, it's fun. Okay, rest stop picnic tables. Jim, have you ever pulled up with your wife and daughter? You've been traveling a long time. It's let's We just don't want to stop into a gas station. Let's just pack you know, some sandwiches, some potted meat. But actually, have you ever not with had a my, picnic? Yeah. Not with my current, not with my wife and daughter, but man, my dad and mom and I and brother and sister, uh, if they were still at home, anytime we vacationed, we used the heck out of rest stop picnic tables. <laughs> I know what you're saying. They're kind of like a newspaper. Nowadays, you're like, why is that even there? Who's stopping here to eat? Uh, but we used to because my dad was such a, um, a penny pincher. Um, I don't think we ever ate at a, at a fast food restaurant when we were in route to a vacation spot we always packed a lunch or two so we yes we we were one of those people that ate at rest stop picnic tables and now that you say this i'm going to tell kelly next time we go on any type of vacation we are going to pack some uh, pb and j's and some uh, potted meat some vienna sausages and we're going to stop at a rest stop picnic table and uh, and chow down jim the next time that y'all are traveling over ever's birthday i want you to bring birthday decorations and pull into a rest stop (laughs) (laughs) and and set up one of those pavilions we might have a dhr called people are gonna be like that poor child has to have her birthday party at a rest stop picnic table oh my goodness (laughs) do a theme you know i know she's too old for whatever gabby's dollhouse but just a, a children's theme and just uh make it look like this thing has been planned yeah for many many months okay jim any uh musicians that we i know we covered some in the first episode and you were watching a documentary on 
you know, the old country guard. Who are you listening to right now along those lines? Oh, man. I uh, have been on a big Waylon Jones kick lately. Uh, or Waylon Jennings, sorry. Waylon, George Jones. Waylon and, Jones. George Jennings and Waylon Jones. <laughs> I got a note sent home. My middle boy, Wyatt, they – Every once in a while, you go to ch- you know pick up your kid, and there's a note on the counter with their name on it. it usually means that something bad happened. Mm-hmm. Waylon McArdle is what the note said, <laughs> not Wyatt. <laughs> I love it. I I really think that uh, if I had had a son, I would have ma- named him Waylon. Kelly would have probably objected, and he'd be named, you know, Spruce or something like that. But no, I've been digging. Especially just found this one Waylon song called "Long Time Gone." You ever heard that one? No, I do. You, is there maybe like a lyric from it that you'd like to like uh, to share? If you if you're gonna get to heaven, got a die. Gonna get in a. Uh, uh, I know it. Got to wear your coat and t i e coat and t i e. But then he says, you know, been a long time gone, and he. Uh, it's obvious to me. I told Kelly today that he. Uh, plagiarized himself because the tune is eerily similar to uh, the Dukes of Hazard theme song. I'm like, is this basically <laughs> the Dukes of Hazzard? He just took Long Time Gone and changed the lyrics for the Dukes of Hazard. So it's a great one. If you, you do know it now that I sing a couple? I do, bars? yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got a few of his studio albums. Honky Tonk Heroes, I recommend everyone just add that one to your collection. Mm-hmm. You're always good with the Wayland Best Of, but uh, there's some great standalone studio albums. Yeah, and I, I'm All just right. a huge fan of his vocal. I love the way he sings. I'd like to think if I was in a cover band, it would be a Waylon cover band. I, I fancy, I know I didn't do it just then, but I feel like when I'm really, I can really mimic the Waylon twang if I have to. I, there was a time, I, and I I couldn't get enough Waylon. There was a time not long after I moved here that I was listening to Waylon Jennings for uh, probably a year solid. Could not get tired of anything. Uh, the Taker, this time... Um, Amanda, and that's a good uh, moving to Pensacola uh, artist to, to latch on to. So kudos. Okay, Jim, we're going to have to wrap up. Wow, this was a, a special session. Anything else that you'd like to add here? This was a sports episode, a Cubs good mojo episode. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we didn't even talk about the two most important teams. Well, I guess they're probably your number two uh, if you were held your feet to the fire. But Alabama football and Auburn football. Auburn is back in the dumpster again. People are still uh, happy with Hugh Freeze and how he's recruiting, even though he's kind of a skis ball uh, or has a skis ball reputation. Um, was happy to see Alabama, you know, come back and whoop Ole Miss last week. I think lots of folks, including your brother, were pretty worried. I watched part of the game with him. Alabama's just – they're not going to win the national championship this year. They have Their offensive line looks really bad. But uh, I don't think Milrow's the problem. I think he's a good player. They just don't give him any time, which is the same exact problem with Auburn, except our quarterback freezes like a deer in the headlights and takes, you know, seven or eight sacks a game. So, wish we could. Maybe sometime we can do another bonus episode and talk more Bama and Auburn football, but uh, at least Bama's trending up right now. Yeah, I think we are um, We are officially out of the dynasty years, and it's exciting for college football, I think that it's not automatic that we're going to have Bama, or Clemson, or Michigan, or Georgia. Yes. Yeah, this year, um, yeah, absolutely. There's This is a great year for sure. Really can't wait for the playoff expansion where even two loss Power 5 schools are, you know, you're not sweating it that much because you figure, well we'll, well, we'll probably still get a seven seed or an eight seed. Yeah, but it'll be exciting. Stuff, I don't, you know, I don't really watch enough to to really comment at length probably keep up with more baseball right now but um but i'm still a huge sports fan and one day i always kind of romanticize being in my late 50s early 60s and it's like wow that's the time where i'll be able to just sit at the ballpark again Mm -hmm. and uh get my scorecard out late 50s i think you're overshooting it i think you're uh you know right around 50 (laughs) you'll be able to your kids will be old enough to entertain themselves and won't have to be constantly watched so let me ask you one more question i know it's your podcast but i've always been curious and we can you know get you on record here those of you that know dan know his favorite teams are the chicago cubs as we've discussed alabama crimson tide and the baltimore ravens put them in order yes your favorite to to least favorite that's the order Mm -hmm. 
Oh, it that's is. That's the Cubs, order that Bama, you put it in. Cubs, yeah. Bama, Baltimore. I Ravens. have some some family members that would be disappointed, but the Chicago Cubs are my uh, my one true love. But UAB, oh, the UAB Blazers. That's our alma mater. Yep. And I feel Pray like for, for the money, for, go for the honey. Yeah. For for too long, we have treated them as an afterthought, and I am just uh, tremendously proud of what they've been able to accomplish. I love following UAB in basketball. Oh, yeah. And um, it was a lot of fun watching that first half. I actually did get to watch most of the first half against Georgia. They look good. Um, they really did. So would um, you move like the UAB it. up above the Ravens? No, no, they'd okay. still I'd, – I'd probably tuck them in right there at number four. Okay. That's a good list. Jim, maybe we'll have another bonus episode in a few more weeks. I'd love that. You, I'll come on anytime you'll have me, Dan. Okay, because when guys. you think of Dan time, you think of Jim. Well, that's why you want to be on the show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but the, all these episodes have just been great. You're doing a great job. I'm happy to always jump in uh, if you ever need a bonus episode. Well, nobody replaces you, Jim. And I know our listeners really enjoy your commentary, shooting from the hip, and you being you. Jim is the best. Is, uh, Let me finish that for you. The best. The best. <laughs> Okay, folks, remember, this may not happen too often anymore, but it used to happen to me sometimes. If you are leaving a family function and an old guy, one, your uncle or whoever, gives you written directions and takes time to say, all right, now you're, you're going to want to go down here and hit 59, and then, then about, about three, three, three and a half, four miles up, you're going to hang a ride on the uh, uh, old 85. All right, now just take 85, just to take that north about, now, about about six, seven miles. You're going to see a little chevron on the right. If you run into a guy that gives you those directions, and especially if he writes them down and hands you a piece of paper, it is your duty to, to follow these directions and do not follow your GPS. He knows what he's doing. He's taking time out to help you, and uh, let that guy do his thing because he will not exist in another few years. You'll never get that sort of, you know, arm leaning into your driver's side window and saying, all right, well, y'all be safe. You just, you know, just give us a call when you get, when you get there. All right, well, we'll see you, uh, you know, hope, hope we see you around Christmas time, you know. Um, so take that guy and dignify him. Okay, folks, y'all have a great day. And, hey, Chicago, what do you say? Cubs are going to win today. Go Cubs, go. That's it for Dan Time. Special session, bonus episode. We'll see you on Sunday. Hey, if you liked that episode, please take a minute to leave a five-star rating for the Dan Time podcast. I'd really appreciate it if you download and subscribe. And to keep up with Dan Time throughout the week, you can follow any one of our social media pages. There's at Dan Time Pod on Twitter slash X. Dan Time Pod on Instagram and the Dan Time Podcast also has a Facebook page. Check us out on YouTube. That's where you can find all the Friday Challenge videos in every episode.